Hello, everyone. I think we're live. I haven't done this before. Oh, there's Billy. Good morning, Billy. So we're live, and we're going to wait for some more people to join here. Good morning, Denise. I know mine is a new face, but uh, I'll introduce myself soon. Good morning, Elizabeth. Ronald, thanks for joining us. Jim, Rolanda, good morning. Hi, Michael's mom. <laughs> nice to meet you. Wanda, good morning, Brian. All right. So we'll wait a couple minutes uh, to make sure we get everybody on, then we'll get started. Uh, let you know a little bit here about who I am. My name is Graham, Graham Wathen, and uh, I am the renewal, uh, the young adults ministry director now. Uh, the Lord did a, a neat work in my family. I have a wife and four small kids, and we, uh, we sold our house nine months ago, seeking what the Lord would have us do. We uh, put everybody in an RV and started traveling the states, just waiting to see the Lord's plan. The Lord gave us a, an idea to take an Abraham step of faith to step out and um, go to the place I will show you, just like he told Abraham. He said, leave your, leave your land and go to the place I will show you. So we had really had no idea uh, what would happen uh, once we stepped out. We, well, we did have our idea. Uh, but that was definitely not the Lord's idea. So um, we went to all over. We we spent not, uh, eight months on the road and 18,000 miles in the RV just seeking what the Lord would have. And he was silent on everything except for St. Joseph, Miss Missouri. And um, so the, the Lord uh, uh, put us here. And that's uh, we know that. And um, we're excited to be here. It's a huge change and transition for us, but um, it's exciting. So I've uh, been taught the last couple of weeks there, um, there at the Renewal group. Uh, just so you know, so everyone knows, if you know someone of that age, we are moving the time and day. So we're moving the day to Thursday nights now, so it works better with other ministries that are happening uh, at Grace, but also um, we're moving the time up a little bit to 6 o'clock for a dinner and hang out. And then 7 o'clock will be worship and study. So Thursday nights, 6 o'clock um, for dinner and hang out. And then 7 o'clock for worship and study on Thursday nights now for the renewal group at the renewal house. So anybody that has a, a college age person they know or uh, a young adult, they don't have to be in college. Um so anybody, you know, from 18, you know, after high school to about 25 or, or so, uh, you know, let them know. They can stop by and that would be great. So at any rate, um, I'm going to get started here. Let's pray and then we'll just get started. All right. So Lord, thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. One more day to serve you, to love you, to know you to glorify you, and that's what we pray would happen in our lives, that you would be glorified, Lord, that you would be high and lifted up, and all that we say, all that we think, all that we do, uh, everywhere we go, Lord, that your fragrance, the fragrance of Christ, would be life to those, Lord, that you would call life to those that would be open and responding, Lord, um, and that they would see Lord, that there is hope in these crazy times, that there is, um, Lord, it's not all bad news, doom and gloom around the world as we see these things happening with uh, 
well, so many different things, but Lord, we, we just ask that you would infuse us with your spirit and you would fill us up to overflowing, that we may be poured out uh, as an offering to you, but as a help to others. So Lord, in this time, I pray that you would open up your word to us, that you would speak into our hearts, and that would, you would just, Lord, use me to communicate, Lord, what you would this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so to, this morning we're going to look at Romans 12, 1 and 2. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, portions of Scripture. It's just so, because it's so practicable. Um, so if everyone wants to move there or turn there or whatever, if you have, have a Bible in front of you, that's great. Uh, so Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Uh, this is, is a great portion of Scripture because it gives us instructions uh, for you know, life, really. You can, you can boil it all down. How are we supposed to live this Christian life? What are we supposed to do? And what's that supposed to look like? And, you know, what, where, we, you know, just practically, how's, how are we supposed to do this, this life, this Christian life? No matter how long we've been walking or how short we've been walking, uh, as far as time goes, this, this gives us these instructions. And, Instructions are good. So um, you can see behind me, we're still we're still moving in. We have lots to do that involves all sorts of things. And one of the things that involves is painting. So yesterday, um, I got a, a, a paint sprayer. I'm spraying a workroom in our house. We have brought some businesses with us that we need to, to, to continue to, to do. Uh, so I'm, I'm painting and spraying this house. I've never used a paint sprayer before. And uh, it's not a complicated piece of equipment, but you got to follow the instructions because if you don't do it, uh, you paint it, you're going to blow up paint. It's going to go everywhere. It's going to be a huge mess. Uh, but the same things can happen with us in our lives with, uh, with this walk. So we, we want to do it according to God's instructions because if we go off by ourselves and just go willy-nilly, um, we could maybe cause more damage than, and than good. Uh, so we want to do this for ourselves. We want to do this for others. We want to do this so we know uh, how to glorify God. And God does not leave us without instructions. He tells us other places in scripture. He says, um, you know, he doesn't just tell us what not to do, but he tells us what to do instead. So uh, for example, he says, do not steal, but instead work with your hands. Okay, it's because if you're working with your hands, then you're automatically not going to be stealing. He says, do not lie, but instead tell the truth. If you're telling the truth, automatically you're not going to be lying. So it works. Um, God is very good to us to give us these, these instructions uh, for our lives. So first of all, he starts off and he says, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, again, for those who, who are just joining us. Uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. So he's Paul saying, I beg you, I just heartfelt beg of you, I'm pleading with you to, to follow these next instructions. And first of all, he says, I beg you, I'm pleading with you, therefore. Uh, whenever you see a therefore in scripture, you got to go back to see what the therefore is there for. And um, previously in, in uh, chapter 11, Romans 11, from 26 on, but especially in the latter, those last few verses, uh, uh, 33 through 36, Paul just goes off on this beautiful, uh, uh, I want to say rant, but that's not the right word, uh, this beautiful explosion out of his heart, uh, verbal explosion of, of just praising God and just, it, he's caught up in the moment of, of just trying to describe the majesty and the, the wisdom and the, the excellence of who God, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, his ways past finding out. He's, he's explaining uh, God's plan of salvation. He just, um, just is so enamored and enraptured by it that he goes on um, to, to just praise God and, and he's talking about who the God is, for who has known the mind of the Lord, who has become his counselor, who has first given to him, it shall be repaid to him. 
For of him and through him and to him are all things. Through him be glory forever. Amen. So he goes into this praise of who God is. He says, because of this, because of these things, because of who God is and what he's done and how worthy he is and how amazing he is, uh, because of this, I beg you to do the following. All right. So to set this up, as we know the context, and then we can go forward knowing why he's telling us to do this. So he says, Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. So first we got we to gotta know that we cannot do well anything on our own. We cannot follow the Lord. We cannot obey the Lord. We cannot step out in what he has for us. We cannot walk in his ways. We cannot uh, do really anything in our lives except by the mercy and by the grace of God. It says by the mercies of God. So that that's inclusive um, of God's grace, of God's mercy, of God's goodness, of, of his kindness towards us, his mercies, uh, the mercies of God. So he's so good to us and he he wants to include us um, in his plans. And you know, I have four little kids and my little kids range from uh, five to nine and they want to help me <laughs> in a lot of things. Um, and it's not always expedient. It's not always easy. It's not always, uh, well, you know, I could do it better myself and quicker and all this sort of stuff, but that's not the point. And, and so could God, but he chooses to use us and he chooses to uh, bless us and to include us um, in his workings. But he does give us mercy, uh, mercies uh, to do these things. So we have to rely upon his mercies to go forward and do any of these things. So first and foremost, we must seek him. We must allow him to work in and through our lives. And we must remember that it's just, it's by his grace. It's by his mercy. We can't muster up and conjure up the, the strength or the will or the desire or the, anything to do these. We just, as we submit to him, as we learn of him, as we release ourselves to him, as we open ourselves to him, then he starts working these things through us. But we still need to do it uh, intelligently, which is by how he explains it or tells us to in his word. So again, we're talking about just life, living life. How do we practically live this life? Okay, I'm a Christian. Great. I go through these things. I, I have work. I have family. I have you know personal things and all this stuff going on. But how do I practically live this life? What, what do I practically do? As a guy, I want, I want to know this. Um, and God, God answers this, this question through this portion of scripture. So, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So there's a lot, lot packed in there. Um, all right. He says um, I, that, that you present your body. So first of all, we're presenting our bodies. What we're doing is we're, we're really, if you think about it, we're giving God a present. It's the only thing that we have uh, that we can give him. We can give him our lives. That's it. He, we owe them to him uh, in, a, in a very real sense. Yes, we are uh, his bond servants now. It's called doulos in the Greek, and we could go into that. But we, we, we are, um, it, it's our, well, we, we do owe him a great deal, right? But it's more than that. It's, it's we, we love him and we want to give him this. We want to give him the only thing we can, which is our lives, our hearts, our minds, okay? And that's all encompassing. So as we do that, he's telling us it's we're to present it to God. And when you present something to somebody, it's like, well, you're giving them a present. I can think about it that way. So when I want to give my wife a present, I don't think about, hmm, what would I really like or what would be very practical? Well, we need a new uh, weed eater so we can take care of the, the edging on, on the lawn. Well, that would be very good. And I can, you know, use the money there and give it to my wife. And well, it's, it's not, that's not going to fly very well or go over very well if I give her a present. So what I need to do is I need to think about what would she like? Okay, I need to go find I need to put time and effort and thought into what she would like and go get that thing that she would be blessed by. What would bless her? What would please her? What would um, you know, go over 
uh, with her and show her that I love her, that I'm thinking of her. So it's the same thing with God. You know, what, what does he want? Not what, what do I think I can give him, but what is he desiring from me? What does he want? What can I give him? So he tells us again in his word what we can do, what, how we can give him ourselves. So we're to present, we're to give him what, what would bless him. And it's kind of strange to think that we can bless God, but somehow he makes it where we can. And we're to present ourselves. What are we, what are we to present? What are we giving him? We're to, we're to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. So we're to present our bodies. Now, this when we're talking about the bodies, it's not just, okay, well, here's my body, but my mind is going to do whatever it wants and think about whatever it wants to think. Or I'm going to give you, yeah, I'll, I'll go to church on Sundays and I'll go serve at the at the you know rebuilding the camp that's coming up in a few weeks and I'll go do these things and do good services with with my body but you know I still have my own plans for my life I still have these these hopes and dreams and desires that are going to be just mine and you know I'm going to reserve those things for me but give you no it's talking about we're to give him our bodies which is the entirety of ourselves we're to give him everything that encompasses us. Our mind is part of our bodies. And to, to give him our thoughts, to give him our will, to give him our desires, our hopes, our dreams, our goals, our aspirations, and, and yes, of course, our physical bodies. This is, this is what we are to present to God because of who he is and what great things he has done because of his majesty and his plan of salvation for us. This is our. This is what we're to give him. This is how, what we're to give him as a gift, to give back to him, really, and we're to do it only by the mercies of God. That's the only way we really can do it because we, we're going to fail in it. But there is forgiveness, and there is grace, and there is mercy, and there's opportunity. But we need to continue to do this, and that's the next part. What are we to present to him? We're to present our bodies, and how are we to present our bodies? We're to present our bodies. A living sacrifice. So the sacrifices used to be what, like a sheep or a bull or a ram or a, a dove or, or whatever it may be, even a grain offering or an oil. They, they would put these things on the altar and it'd be burned up, right? So how many times can you just gather that up again and present it again to God? No, that's a one-time gift to God. And that's fine. That's great. But now in the new covenant, what we're talking about is that we're supposed to be presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. Uh, so first of all, this speaks of a daily thing. So over and over again, daily, even hourly, even minute by minute, we're to submit these to God, to present him with this. Again, our hopes, our dreams, our goals, our aspirations, our desires, our minds, our hearts, our thoughts, our bodies, our speech, uh, everything that we, we are, everything we have, we're to present to him as a living sacrifice over and over again, uh, continually. So it's not just a one-time thing. It's not like, well, I gave my life to God when I was, you know, uh, 14, and yeah, ever since then, I just kind of, you know, just do whatever I want. No, every day, all the time, we're to continually give ourselves to him, be in this mindset of walking with him, knowing who he is, in light of who he is, just giving him who we are. And this is um, a, a, a neat thing because it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard thing, but it, it's a very neat thing, but it is a very hard thing because it is a sacrifice. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not easy to just say, well, okay, yeah, it's a, all right, I present my God with everything. No, it's, it takes work. It takes dedication. It takes um, a mental uh, effort. It takes all these things to to, to give to God this as he's, as he's laying it out for us as a living sacrifice. So it is, it is a sacrifice, but it's a worthy one, and it's a beautiful one, and it's one that God is, is desirous of, but he's also worthy of. What else can we give back to him when he's given us so much? All right, so how, how else we should we present our bodies? We're to present it as a living sacrifice. We're to present it as holy. Holy is the next thing. So when something is holy, it means it is dedicated to God. It is only for God's use. It is not for anything else. We're not to give some of our, 
our lives to uh, God and, and reserve some of our lives for this thing or that thing or whatever it may be. We're to present our lives completely and totally uh, holy to Him. It is supposed to, be, supposed to be for Him, for His use only. Um, you know, there's things in our lives uh, that are for my use only. That's it. Like my toothbrush. I don't, no one else <laughs> needs to use my toothbrush. That's a silly example, uh, but it's not for any other use. I, you don't clean with it. You, no one else uses anything, it for anything. It's for my use only. It's, it's set apart for me. So um, it, again, it's a silly example, but it, our lives are to be set apart for God, to get, be given to God only. Um, and completely his so we know what we know why we're, we're supposed to be giving this back to God we know what we're supposed to be giving and now we're looking at how we're supposed to be giving it we're supposed to be giving it uh, as a living sacrifice holy uh, and acceptable to God so the only way we can give something acceptably to God is by and some of you may know it uh, faith so faith is the only way we can give something to God acceptably because without faith, it's impossible to please God, it says in Hebrews. So without faith, it's possible to please God. And that is the only way we can give ourselves to him, uh, to give him, give it to him acceptably. We're, to give it all of us is to be a living sacrifice over and over daily, uh, continual. Uh, it's, it is a sacrifice, but it's a worthy sacrifice and it's for his use only. And it's to be done by faith, trusting that the Lord is going to take your life, take those dreams, goals, hopes, aspirations, desires, take your, your physical body and your life, even uh, where you live or where you move. He's going to take these things and he's going to use them and do well with them. That it's not a, a wasted life, giving this life back to him, allowing him to use it and to go uh, use it for his glory and for his purposes. It's not a wasted life. It's a well-invested life and it's a well-lived life. Again, this is all in the light of who he is and what he's done for us. This is our response. This is how we are now to live this life. Once we see his goodness and glory, it's like, well, what now what? What do I do? Well, this is, this is what you do. It's different for everybody. It looks different in other people's lives, but it's the same principles for all of us. And it's what we find here in scripture. So we're to give these lives back to him in this manner. We're to give it to him in faith, trusting who he is, who's he's, who, who he's proved himself to be, trusting in his goodness and his graciousness, um, his faithfulness, uh, trusting in his provision, trusting in all these things, even when it doesn't look so great or look so hot you know you look at paul and his uh repertoire of what he went through uh we know that he was very used of the lord we know that he was very loved of the lord but he was also shipwrecked he was also uh in the deep a couple times and he was having hungers and thirsting often and he was uh, beaten and he was also he got beaten so bad one time that he he died and um there's there's so many so many things that he went through but his, no one would look at his life and say, well, it was a wasted life. He trusted the Lord. So he gave his life to the Lord in faith. And so we are to do the same. We are to give ourselves, present ourselves as a gift to the Lord, present our bodies, all of us, everything that entails, as a living sacrifice, continually, over and over again, as a sacrifice, but we're to present it to him for his use only, not reserving any little part for ourselves, we're to present to him acceptable, which is by faith. We're to do this to God, which is our reasonable service. And these words are very interesting. So uh, reasonable is the Greek word logikos, which means, um, well, just that logical. It's our logical service. It's something that makes sense. It's, it's reasonable. It's logical. It's something that is like, yeah. Well, because look what he's done for me. He saved my eternal life. Well, so what? what's the big deal with me serving him for the rest of mine? Whether that's the next 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, 80 years, it doesn't matter. Because for this short time I have that I can serve him and bless him and glorify him with my life because he saved my life for eternity. 
which is obviously forever. So what, what kind of ex exchange is that? That's, that's logical, that's reasonable, of course. And if I want to worship God, and in, 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 it speaks of an intelligent way. If I want to do this in an intelligent way, how can I do this? Well, he just laid it out. He says, you do it these ways, and this is your reasonable, which is logical or intelligent service. That word service is lateria, and it speaks of worship. as our reasonable worship, our intelligent worship, our logical worship. And of course, it's not just cut and dry, this is my logical worship. It's, it's, it's intelligent. So if I want to worship God and I want to do it intelligently, uh, the way that he has set it up to be, I want to do it to the best of my ability. I want to worship him and just I'm just so in love with him and I want to give him back because of the great things he's done for us. This is how I can do it. It's the intelligent way to do it. So worshiping him is obviously much more than singing songs on a Sunday morning. Uh, we worship him with our lives. We worship him with our hearts and our minds. We worship him uh, with uh, all of us in, in these specific ways. He goes on to say, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm sorry for my squeaky chair. I just, I'm realizing that's probably really loud for you all. Um, I will try not to move. So do not be conformed to this world. Uh, being there, especially these days, we see so much going on and we don't want to live this world as, as the world is. We don't want to go through this world and uh, be a part of this world in what uh, it's doing and the things it's, it's saying, especially in the way that it's going. And there's so much pressure to conform us to what the world is is or what the world wants us to be. Why can't you just get in line? You know, you Christians, you have your own way of doing things. Why don't you just get in line with the rest of us and toe the line? Why don't you just get on board with the LGBTQ plus agenda? Why don't you get on board with the transgender thing, the abortion thing? Why do you have to make waves? Why don't you get out, just stop standing in the way and just get in line with us? And you get it from work. People are getting fired all over this country because they're not uh, getting in line with what the government or the company says. People are, are losing jobs, are losing pensions, they're losing all sorts of things these days because they're not getting in line. What, whatever view you have of uh, uh, vaccines and stuff like that, it doesn't really matter because the problem is they're trying to conform us. They're not letting us choose and be uh, free-thinking individuals. They, the world wants to conform everybody into one thought pattern. And we see it so often with the, the tolerance. Um, they're, they're only tolerant towards those who believe the same way, which is oxymoronic to say the least. However, we are not to be conformed to this world. So we're to resist that. We're to stand against that no matter what it may mean for us. We're to stand on the truth of God's word. We're to stand firm and stand strong and say, well, not, not just that God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Well, we can cut out the middle part even. God said it, that settles it. It doesn't matter if I believe it or not as far as if it's true or not. And I'm going to follow truth. Of course, we need to believe it and we should believe it. But it's true whether I believe it or not. So we're going to, we, we need to follow that. We need to resist the world. Do not be conformed to the world. You can't do those previous things if you're being conformed to the world. You can't present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God if you're following the world, because then you're giving yourself to the world, right? And we're to keep ourselves holy, only for his use, acceptable by faith, as a living sacrifice, daily, hourly, even minute by minute, giving ourselves over to God. This is our, our intelligent worship. This is the way we give back to him. And um, he goes on to say, instead, again, it's, it's so great. I love that God does this for us. He gives us these instructions. The instructions are, are not just don't do something, but he tells us what to do instead. So he says, do not be conformed, but instead be transformed. And how do we be transformed? Well, first of all, that word transformed is the word metamorpho. 
in Greek, and metamorpho is where we get metamorphosis, just like a butterfly. It's this ugly little fat caterpillar that moves very slowly, and all it does is eats. That's its whole objective and mission is to eat and eat and eat, and it's never satiated. It's never full enough. It never gets uh, what it what it's desiring until it goes into that metamorphosis state. And so that thing, it's, it's just constantly just cramming stuff into it, trying to satiate itself. And that's how we were when we were in the world. That's how we were. We we're cramming this in and that in and everything else we we're trying to cram in to fill that God-shaped hole in us. And we're doing that until the moment we were changed. We were changed by God and glory be to God that he changed us and saved us from that. And now we can move forward with a purpose, with a, with a focus, with a, a vision of what God has for our lives. Because he is the one that satiated us. He is the one that filled us. He is the one that transformed us into this beautiful butterfly that floats above it all and is able to move above it all. I mean, the butterfly could land on the ground and walk amongst the caterpillars again if it chose to but why why would we do that no we are to be we're to rise above it and to move away from it uh, so don't be conformed to the world but be transformed and how are we transformed by the renewing of our minds and this is only done by the holy spirit through the word of god so the word of god and the bible right as we put this into our minds as we as we fill ourselves with the Word of God as we continue to not just listen to teachings and, and listen to attend Sunday mornings or whatever it may be but as we apply it to our lives as we ask God by the power of the Holy Spirit to take his word and put it into our hearts put it into our minds and change our hearts and minds with it is the only way that we're going to be transformed that's the renewing of our minds God tells us in his word to as husbands wash your wives with the water of the word and this is how we wash our own minds with the water of the word and in the, in the Psalms how is a young man to cleanse his way by by your word by your word over and over again it's only by his word by his revealed truth to us that we are able to transform our minds our minds have been conditioned for how many ever years to to think as the world thinks and we need to remove that take that out take up that world view out of our minds and and to combat that and put in god's worldview how do we see all these issues that are facing us today we need to see it through god's word what does god say about it not what does my political party say not what does my family say not what does my upbringing or my culture say about this that or the other because god spans he is above all that he is spanning all that and it doesn't matter what what culture you were raised in. It doesn't matter how you were raised or what were your family unit like. It doesn't matter um, where, we, where you come from or what uh, level of education you have. Uh, it doesn't matter what skin color you are. It doesn't matter all these things because God is above that. He is the God and Lord over all. And he is the one that can give us this new worldview. We got to put on those uh, glasses where we can see through the lens of scripture what is happening uh, and what is going on and then we can we can have hope for the day and we can have um, peace in this time and not go crazy like you see all these people doing I wasn't surprised that there were so many riots and there's so many stuff going on uh, last year and I think things are going to happen again but I'm not surprised because these people are without hope if I was without hope and I had nothing to live for anyway and it's all crumbling before me and all my, you know, everything got stripped away, well, why not? You know, I'm just an animal anyway. I was just, just a product of evolution. So just survival of the fittest. Let's go out and just have, you know, get my own. But this is not how we're to think. We're to go above this and let the word of God transform us and renew us and give us that new biblical worldview um, so we can see what is truly lying behind this because we don't fight against flesh and blood we don't we won't fight against uh, these people that are out there on the other 
side. We fight against the spiritual powers of wickedness. It's hard to remember that. It's hard to keep that in, in my mind. It's hard, you know, I get just, I get <laughs> very chagrined and just disappointed when I see, uh, uh, you know, what, what the current administration is doing and things like that. But um, we're not, I don't fight against them. We're not to fight against them. I'm to pray for them. This is what God tells us. And only with a renewed mind can we, can we look past uh, the surface. And we can see what is really happening behind the scenes. And we can then have a heart to actually pray for these people that are in power and, and to have even pity upon them um, because we, we know the truth. So uh, as we go on, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may do what? Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God he is so good to us. So he doesn't just save us and then let us go. He doesn't just save us and say, okay, you're on your own. He says, I, I saved you for a purpose and a plan. And I have it set out. I was just reading in my own devotions and, and First Timothy this morning, how he talks about he has a plan for us from, from the beginning. First uh, Timothy 8 and 9. So, well, we'll just, we'll just say 9. So, who has saved us, being God, right? The power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. It's, a, I mean, this blows my mind, that before time began, he had a purpose and a calling for me. He had a purpose and calling for you. And he has that set out. He has, he has this laid out from before time began. And in this, he is going forward and he wants you to walk in it. He wants me to walk in his purpose, his calling, his will. So as we lend ourselves to God, as we give ourselves to God in these ways, we may prove, we will prove, not that we may, well, we may or may not, it might prove. No, it will prove that you may do it, that it will happen, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And his will is very good. It is the best that we can have. There's nothing better in this life than his will. There's nothing better than following in him and walking in his ways. It might not look like that, from our eyes or our earthly understanding. But as we renew our minds, as we see things through the lens of Christ, then yes, it is it is the perfect thing. It is the best thing out there. It is good. It is a good path. It is, it is well thought out by God, of course. He does all things well. So he can take our lives and do something good with our lives. As we've given to him, it's acceptable which means it, it's, um, it's not just acceptable to him, which is very important, but it's acceptable to us. It's a will that will please, that will bless us, not just please us, but will bless us as we give ourselves to him. I've been, never been more blessed in my life than when I gave my life to the Lord fully and completely, knowing what I was doing, dedicating myself to him, and then watch what he's done and, and the places he's taken me and the things he's done uh, with me and through me. I'm, I'm just along for the ride, it feels like. I'm like just trying to keep up with the Lord and, and uh, he's doing so many things and it's, it's, it's definitely acceptable. It's much more than I could have taken my life and made out of it, of course. It's kind of silly to say when, we, when we're on this side of it looking at it, but sometimes we need to be reminded of that. So it's good, it's acceptable, and it's perfect. There's no wrong in it. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's no shadow or variation of turning in the Lord whatsoever. It's perfect. He has a perfect will set out for us. Again, it might not look like that. It might not seem like that at the moment. We might be going through hard times and like, oh God, why are you doing this? Or why are you allowing this to happen? Or, or couldn't you just do this? In the midst of all that, that's where the faith comes in. Because we know who God is. It's not a blind faith. We know who God is. We know who he is in our lives. We know what he's done. We know what he's capable of. We know what he's done for us. And we understand as we step back that we understand that this life is temporary. So all these things, all these hardships, these things we go through, uh, physical, mental, emotional, financial, whatever it may be, these things we see happen, they're temporary. 
And because they're temporary, they are endurable, number one, but number two, they can be used for a greater purpose. And this is what we believe God is doing and wants to do in our lives. So to recap, we want to know we've been saved by God. We've been so blessed by God. And because of who God is, we want to give ourselves. We want to give back to him and live this life where it means something for him. How do we do that? Again, Romans 12, 1 and 2 gives us the outline of how to live our lives for the Lord in a real and impactful way that not only will bless others, but will bless him. Because of what he's done, I beg you, Paul saying, I beg you to do this. Because of who God is and what he's done, I beg you by his grace, by his mercy, by his kindness, by his goodness, by his help, I beg you to, to present, to give a present to God, make a gift to God of your bodies, your hearts, your minds, your souls, your strength, your goals, desires, aspirations, to take all of this, make it a present, give it to God as a living sacrifice every day, putting it on the altar every day, giving it to him and make it holy to him. Give it to him and him alone. Don't give it to anybody else or let anything else have any part of it, including yourself. Give it to him completely, holy, set apart for him. Do it in an acceptable way by faith, trusting that he will take it and that he will use it and he will, he will do good by it. Do, do this to God because this is our intelligent worship. Don't be conformed to the world. Don't let the world cram you into its box, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Let your mind be metamorphosized by, by the by the renewing of your mind, the, uh, the word going in, the, the Holy Spirit applying the word to us. And in that, you will see God's good, acceptable, and perfect will played out in your lives. It's very exciting. The Lord is doing something great uh, in this church. He's doing something great in, in the city, in this area, in this time. This is, these times are unprecedented. And God is doing something amazing uh, in all of this. And so we want to be right there with him. Uh, this is how you do it. And I hope we can take these things and apply it to our lives and go forth from here. So again, uh, thank you for taking the time to, to spend here. Um, let's pray and then go about his business. Lord, we, uh, we do ask that you would take your Holy Spirit and your word and that you would apply it to our lives, that you would change us, that we would be usable and moldable by you, that we would be glorifying to you, that you would, Lord, be pleased with us as you have blessed us so much. There's no way we could ever repay you for what you've done, and you don't expect it. You want us to live this way, not just so you can get something from us. You want us to live this way because it's the best thing for us. And Lord, we want to glorify you. That should be... And our chief goal and aim and aspiration in our lives is to glorify you. Make it so. Help us, Lord, to taste and see more and more that you are good. That we can say, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. And I would rather be uh, a, a doorman in the house of the Lord than, than the king of the world. Lord, we, we can so easily get caught up in this life. We can so easily get caught up in the things of this world. Um, and seeing, seeing what's going on, Lord. But Lord, help us to, to see it through your lens. And the more and more as we see that day approaching, help us to be simply given over to you. Please take these things and apply them to our lives even this day and every day going forth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, thanks for sticking around and coming and visiting. Again, my name is Graham Wathen. Uh, just been here a couple weeks now. I've been renew, a renewal uh, leader, and um, we will see you around. God bless.